What's up riders, old man Ronan here. Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, we're in the shop today because we're gonna do our very first modification on the Meteor 350. It's uh, one of the most important ones. And if you guys remember some of the other videos that uh, I've talked about possible modifications on the uh, Meteor 350, you know which one it's gonna be. So it's gonna be a blast, stay tuned. It's gonna be full of a lot of fun information. Well, here's what you get. Obviously the rack, you get four spacers, you get two 90 millimeter uh, M8 bolts, two 70 millimeter M8 bolts, a couple black washers, uh, some lock washers, and the tools that you're gonna need is a six millimeter to take the bolts out, a five millimeter is to put the new ones in, and of course a ratchet and extension. This is a really easy install, yet it's one of the most important ones. Well, one of the first things I like to do besides, you know, checking out the, uh, uh, the equipment before I try to install is I check the welds and stuff. And man, the GV stuff is freaking awesome, man. I, I love it, what I have on the Himalayan, and uh, I think I'm going to really like this too. But what I like to do is I like to see how it's going to fit. And uh, this particular unit just bolts right there. The four bolts. I do know I have to have spacers in it, but... Man, that's going to be sweet. So that's what we're going to try to do is see how it fits. It looks like it fits really nice. I like the fact that on this particular one, they made it like semi-gloss. It kind of matches the, uh, the frame and uh, the whole look of the bike. So it's, uh, it's pretty outstanding. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is take uh, these two bolts out on the front part of the uh, seat and also the backrest. And the reason I'm doing that is because as I want to affix the uh, rear uh, rack on there, I want to be able to move it up and down. That way I don't take everything off all at once and things can get pretty much fall out of place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these bolts out put the rack on with the spacers and everything, really, really loose. That's one thing. Uh, I had a guy question uh, the uh, other day on the, uh, uh, as far as a comment, and then he sent me an email. He said, man, I'm having a hard time putting the racks on the Himalayan. And I said, well, are you tightening everything down first, or are you ever ha having everything really loose? Because these, pretty much all motorcycles, if you're putting stuff on that you're taking, you know, you're incorporating both right and the left-hand side, you want to make sure everything is super, super loose. You know, just a couple threads in there, make sure everything lines up, and then tighten one side to the other to make sure everything squeezes together properly. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to loosely put things in and then eventually tighten things up uh, one side to the other and make sure everything's copacetic. You know, Iron Lady gave me this uh, grip mat and uh, for Christmas this year, and I'll tell you what, it's really a cool thing to, I'm not sponsored, uh, she bought it for me for uh, Christmas, but it's really cool to keep all your stuff together in one place, and, and you can set it pretty much anywhere you want, it's kind of soft material, I'm just going to set it like that for right now, and then we're going to get started in putting this thing together. But I thought you were going to get a kick out of seeing that. So what you want to do is you want to start your uh, assembly process by looking at the instructions. What they say is to take up for the front one to the uh, 90 millimeter uh, bolt and put the lock washer on, followed by the black washer. And of course, we're going to take this here, feed it into the front, and then put the spacer on behind it. Let's see if we can do this. And you gotta try it without scratching stuff. <laughs> Just get her started and then we'll go to the other side. Lock washer, black flat washer, and then your spacer.
And like I say, just run it in there, just get a few threads in it. And then you've got some space to take this side off. So now we're gonna remove these bolts here. Oh man, that one's tight. Get a little arc on it. There we go. Well, you probably noticed there that it kind of dropped down a little bit, which is one of the reasons why I didn't want to take all the bolts off at one time. So what we're going to do is do the rear bolts, which are a little bit shorter. And, whoop. Line everything up. Again, so much easier. Whoop. <laughs> Uh, live TV, folks. Well, not really live. I forgot to put the spacer in there. No! Duh. Just get it started and go to the other side. As I was lining everything up, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to put it in there very, very loose. I also wanted to put some Loctite on it. So what we're going to do is put a little dabble do ya on here. Hopefully. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Live, uh, live video guys. But, and then run it back in there and then we're going to, uh, make sure she's got a few threads. Goes in there nice and easy. Run it in by hand. Actually what I'll do is I'll take the end of the ratchet there and just spin it in a little bit until she snugs up a little bit. And then I'm gonna to go to the other side and do the same thing, putting Loctite on each one of the bolts. Gotta go to the store and buy more Loctite. Now after I get them all Loctited up, and now we're gonna go in and start tightening things with the five millimeter wrench, or ratchet. I'm not gonna make it really tight yet because I wanna make sure that everything is nice and, and uh, lined up properly. And you can use an impact on this if you want. I just prefer to do a wrench or a ratchet. Again, just, just basically just get it to where it's not quite tight, but just a little snug. And we're gonna do it on all four sides. Then what I want to do is I want to take a nice look at it and then go ahead and tighten it up. Now, I did not find any torque measurements on this, so we're going to use the German method, Gutentight. Again, looking at it, make sure she's fairly level, and then I'm going to start with the back bolts here first and tighten them up. Don't over tighten, guys. I hate drilling bolt. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Uh. 
there. Solid as a rock. Uh, looks good. We're gonna grab the camera here and show you around a little bit and see what it looks like and then I'm gonna wipe her down. You know how I do things. Man, I don't know about you, but I think that looks awesome. <laughs> We're gonna roll it outside here as soon as I wipe it off. So before we roll a motorcycle out uh, of the shop to take a look at it outside, I thought I'd show you the, uh, the steps that I go through on the Airmoto air pump. And uh, hit the little uh, button on the side there, screw it in. I mean, everything is just so, <laughs> so compact. And then you push the center button to turn it on, it'll say on. And of course, and let me see if we can get this here. There's a there's a little switch right here on the bottom. You push down and you can alternate it between bicycle, ball, general, whatever you want to do with it, uh, car, and of course motorcycle. And uh, on the front tires, it's 32 pounds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the poundage down to 32. Then we're gonna plug it in and see what it is. The back is 34. So let's uh, let's check it out. See, it's not down that much. It only says 31 and a half. So we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna let it run real time. That's it, 32 pounds. And I do this every day when I'm checking out my tires. Let's go to the back. Now we said again, the back is 34. So let's check and see what we got here. And the back actually says 35 and a half. So, and that's good because I wanted to show you this. We can let some air out of it. You see, I still have it set for the front tire. So let's change it to 34, Whoop, back it up. And we only have a half a pound on this one to go to. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Nothing to it. And of course, like I mentioned before, if I wanted to let some air out a little bit, I took it down to 32 and a half. So let's turn it back on again. And she turns off. And that's one of the reasons why I love this uh, little air pump so much because particularly on the Himalayan when I'm going in and out of uh, gravel roads I have the ability to uh, to lower pressure and then put it back up to where it was to begin with. Again, just simply hit hold the button in, turn it off, and of course like I mentioned you can do it in either uh, uh, metric or you can also do it in uh, pounds per square inch. Man, I don't know about you, but I think this thing looks really awesome. So let's check it out here. I gotta tell you guys, I love that Airmoto Smart uh, air pump. Uh, it really does solve a lot of issues for me, particularly on the Himalayan, because when I, and you guys know I go off-road a lot with the bike or on gravel roads, and in those kind of situations, I like to lower the air pressure a little bit. Snow, the same way. I like to lower the air pressure and then build it back up when I'm done riding in those situations. And that pump makes it so much easier. Plus, in case I get in an issue, some problem, get a flat tire, whatever, and it also will work on cars, bicycles, balls, inflatables, whatever you want to have. I'll tell you, it's a great little air pump. And uh, yeah, you're seeing it right now. Little Ronin's gone by, and that means now's the time to enter for a free Airmoto smart air pump. 
All you have to do is be a subscriber, make a comment below, and then send me an email at oldmanronan at gmail.com and you'll be entered to win one of these great Airmoto Smart Air Pumps throughout the month of March. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification button, share and comment. You know I read all the comments and comment on as many as I possibly can. Until next time, guys, ride safe and keep her on two wheels, baby.